Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Idea Spot. In today's video, you'll learn how to use a free Gmail account to set up a custom domain email address. So you can set up a professional email address at your own name. So at your own name.com, you can use that as a professional email address, a business email address. And this is completely free. It doesn't involve G Suite, doesn't involve Google Workspaces. This is using a free Gmail account. All right, I'm in my free Gmail account right here. As you can see, I can send emails using my own ideaspot.space domain. I can send and receive them just fine. They all land in the primary inbox. No problem with spam, no problem with things being flagged as promotions. So if you want to try this for yourself, make sure you watch this one right to the end. Okay, now this method is possible through a free service called forwardemail.net. That allows us to forward emails from our domain into our Gmail box. I'll also show you how to set up Gmail to add your own custom domain and send emails from your Gmail. So those are the two key steps. I'm going to be using the free version of forwardemail.net for everything in this tutorial. And the only real limitation in the free version is the 50 megabyte attachment limit. I think that's going to be fine for 99% of us. And I think there's a 300 email per hour limit as well. So you can't send out massive marketing emails using a free service like this. But for everyday emails, I think this is going to be a great solution for a lot of us watching. I'll also mention just quickly that this method works for Gmail Outlook and Yahoo. I'm just going to be using Gmail in the example, but you can apply the same concepts to Outlook and Yahoo if you prefer to use those systems. But let's get started. First step is to head over to forwardemail.net and we click sign up for free. Now here we can make an account using an email address and password, or you can sign in with Google or GitHub. So I'm just going to sign with Google here. And from here, we want to add a new domain. And here we enter our domain name. So I'm going to be using ideaspot.space for this demonstration. Hit continue. Now we just start configuring our domain. We click this one. So now it tells us we need to configure our domain. It's going to take less than 10 minutes to do this. It gives us a lot of instructions. Basically, we need to go into our DNS and then add a few records to our DNS. So they've got links to all the common uh, DNS hosts. For example, if you're with GoDaddy, you'd go sign in, manage the domain, select your domain, and then manage the DNS. So you just need to get to your DNS management screen. In this case, I'm using Cloudflare, so it's just signing in and go to the DNS. And then we need to add the MX records. So the thing worth noting here is that there should be no other MX records set. So if you've set up another email system with other MX records, we're going to remove those and add these in. So I'm going to copy that first one there, forward email.net. I'll note that priority is going to be 10 and the time to live is going to be 3600. So here in Cloudflare, as we said before, I do use Cloudflare personally to manage all my DNS stuff. So Cloudflare, I have done a tutorial on how to set up Cloudflare if you want to use uh, Cloudflare for your domain. So that's worth checking out. You do get extra speed and security upgrades as well. And it's all free. So uh, a really cool way of doing things. But here we just need to remove any existing uh, MX records. So I was using Zoho before for my email. I'm going to remove these MX records from Zoho. So it's just a matter of deleting those out. This will depend a little bit on what your DNS management screen looks like. But basically, you find any MX records and you remove those from your DNS. And then I'm going to add that new one in here. So that's just a matter of going uh, an MX record. And we're going to add that in there. And then we add at for root. And the time to live was 3600, which is in seconds, but we're dealing with hours here. So that is one hour and the priority is 10 and we'll hit save. Quick maths there, 60 times 60 equals 3600, which is the same as what they're asking us to do here for our time to live. Then it's pretty much the same thing for the second MX server. So we're going to add another MX record. There we go at that uh, priority 10 and one hour. There we go. All right, back to our instructions. So step four, we're going to add a text record and the text record sets up our forwarding. Now, there are a few options for doing this. Option A 
will just forward everything over to your selected Gmail account. So for example, uh, all at ideaspot.space, hello at ideaspot.space, uh, alex at ideaspot.space, all those emails will just forward over to my selected Gmail account. In this case, I'm going to use ideaspotclass at gmail.com. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is you just choose a specific thing. So let's say I wanted hello at ideas.space to forward over to my Gmail account and no other aliases would forward to my Gmail account, then I'd use this method here and then option C you could set up multiple forwarding emails so you could have say hello and then support and then Alex and you just separate them with a comma and you can just continue to separate them with a comma up to 255 characters in a text record so if you want to use more um, forwarding addresses than that you'd have to make extra text records in your DNS but let's go ahead and let's just use this uh, option A for now so I'm going to copy this one here and go back to my DNS. We're going to add that text record. There we go. And it's at, and then we put in our record there. And we set that time to live back to one hour. And it's just a matter of replacing this user at gmail.com to match your own Gmail address. So I'm going to delete that one out, user at gmail.com, and add in my address, ideaspot.class at gmail.com. That will depend on what your Gmail address is, but just pop that in there and we click save. And back to our instructions on the next step. We can scroll down here to part five. So we are gonna be adding another text record here. This is the SPF record. So we can go ahead and copy this one. Now this one can be a little more tricky because you may have other SPF records that you need to integrate with this one. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So we go back to our DNS and we have a look through our text records and we find if there is any SPF record already here. In my case, I already have one for uh, Zoho Mail, which I was using before but you may actually have some email services that you'd like to keep using and you want to keep that SPF record in there. So all we do, let's, uh, I'll enter another line here and I'll paste in the uh, new SPF record. And all you have to do is take out the, the one you want to keep. So I want to keep that Zoho Mail one in. I'm going to cut that out and I'll paste that at the end with a space in before uh, the forward mail one. So we've got include forward mail and include Zoho, comma you, and we can delete that part out there and save that in. So all this means is that any emails that are sent out through forwardemail.net or Zoho Mail or any others that you have listed in there are going to pass the SPF. So that's the sender policy framework. It'll pass the policy and it won't get treated like spam. It'll be a proper email from the domains that you allow to send email. Okay, now back to our instructions. We are up to step six. We can verify our DNS records using our verify records tool available at my account domain under setup. So we head over to my account and domains and we are completing the ideaspot.space setup. And we can verify our records. And there we go. We've got a success message. All emails sent to ideaspot.space are going to forward over to our ideaspot class Gmail account. Okay, so now we're on to step two, which is optional. We can send emails using our domain using Gmail. So we can set up our Gmail. First step to this is to make sure you have two-factor authentication enabled on your Gmail. So I've already got two-factor authentication. That just means that you use your mobile phone to authenticate your login requests uh, for your Gmail account. But if you haven't set that up, just follow the link there and get started and go through your uh, two-step verification process for Google. But since we already had two-factor on our account already, we can go to the second step and that is to head over to our app passwords page on Google. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. It's just going to ask me to log in. After logging in, you'll get your app password screen. So we are setting up a mail app and the device can be other. And the name of this device is going to be alex at ideaspot.space. This is going to be the email address that we're going to use in Gmail to uh, send out emails using our Gmail account. And we hit generate. And that is going to generate a password for us that we can use when we want to send out emails using Gmail from this custom address. All right, so just keep that password in a safe place and we're going to head over to our next step. They actually recommend copying the password over to the clipboard just to keep it safe for a minute while we set up our Gmail account. So we're going to go to Gmail under settings accounts and send mail as. So from our Gmail account, we head over to the settings gear here and we go to see all settings. From here, we go to accounts and import. 
And this is where we find the send mail as, and we're gonna add another email address. And here we just enter a name and we set the email address as our custom email address. I'm gonna use alex at ideaspot.space. We untick treat as an alias and click next. Now our SMTP server is going to be smtp.gmail.com. The username is going to be our Gmail username. So I'm using ideaspotclass at gmail.com, but this is going to be whatever your uh, Gmail username is. And the password is going to be that password that we were keeping safe that we generated under the Google app passwords page. So we'll pop that password in there and we're going to be using TLS security and we're going to add that account. So but there it says, congratulations, we've successfully located your credentials. And from here, we're going to get a confirmation code sent to alex at ideaspot.space. So if our forwarding has all been set up properly, hopefully we'll get that confirmation code sent to our Gmail. All right, so just checking our Gmail inbox, we can see the Gmail team have sent us our Gmail confirmation and that has a link in it. We can go ahead and click that link. And this is going to confirm our ability to send email using Gmail. So there we go. We click confirm. And there we go. Now we can send mail as alex at ideaspot.space from our Gmail account for free. If you haven't given this video a like, can you just give me a like right now? Because this is a pretty handy little tip and it's going to save you a few dollars if all you need is a custom email to send out from your Gmail address. All right. So now you'll notice that if you refresh your Gmail account and you go to compose a new email, you can go to your uh, from field and you can actually choose. You can choose to send it from ideaspotclass at gmail.com or we can actually send it from alex at ideaspot.space, our custom email address we can use as our from address. So let's go ahead and send a quick test mail and see how this works. So in no time at all, that email has come through in Gmail to my other Gmail box and here it is. So that works just fine. One little tweak we might do is you might want to add a little avatar for your Gmail account and match it up to that custom email address that we just built. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So to do this, you just head over to myaccount.google.com. You can just search for email there and head over to the email page. That'll take you here and you want to add an alternative email. So we'll click add alternative email. Again, we'll need to log in. And now we just enter the alternate email. That's gonna be the one we set up today, alex at ideaspot.space. We're gonna add that one. And we're gonna get a request for verification. So I'm gonna to need to check alex at ideaspot.space. We can see in our inbox, we've got a security alert. We click that and we verify our address with that little here link there. Again, we'll have to log in and now it'll say your alternate email address is now verified. And now after sending another test email, we can see that we've got our Gmail avatar loading up there just fine. Another thing worth checking is does it receive email just fine? And it does. I've just sent myself an email over to alex at ideaspot.space so we can receive email just fine here. So uh, to alex at ideaspot.space, it's receiving email and sending email just fine. And another really cool feature is that this domain forwarding works for any alias of the domain. For example, if I sent an email to support at ideaspot.space, it's going to land in this Gmail inbox just fine as well, which is can be really cool if you're running a solo project and you want to have email addresses, say for support at ideaspot, sales, contact, whatever you like, and they'll all forward into your Gmail inbox you can use uh, labels and rules to filter them and sort them how you like. And you can really run a little project uh, using a free service like this quite easily. The other thing that's really nice that I noticed that all these emails were landing bang into the primary inbox. There's no issue with things going into spam or getting labeled as promotion by mistake. This works really quite well. Anyway, try it out for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. The other really nice way of doing this is through a Zoho Mail free account. I've done that in a previous tutorial. I'll put that uh, video up here so you can check that one out. For those of you who love using Gmail, this is perfect. I've really enjoyed setting this up and using this method with Gmail to send custom domain emails. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.